Hey guys, this is hopefully going to be a fairly quick video on how to go about merging the 7.0 or newer update into an existing project that already has an older version before version 7 of the plugin installed. So to simulate a normal project, I've taken all of the content out of the plugin folder and moved it into the projects content folder here. So this will simulate you know, a project that has blueprints that already are using the plugin as a dependency. Because again, this is going to be uh, mainly a focus on working with redirectors. Now, I've already, com well, I'll just show you when we get there. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and update the plugin to a new version. Now, before you actually get started, I'm going to go ahead and close this. What I recommend you do is create a new branch. So here I'm just going to use GitHub Desktop a little simpler. And I'm just going to create a new branch, and I'm going to call it, uh, let's do Merge Plugin Progress or just merge plugin and create the branch, go ahead and publish it. So now I'm on my merge branch or my merging plugin branch. So once we have that set up, we're ready to go ahead and update safely. So I've already downloaded the plugin. So I have it here, 5.1 engine plugins and wherever marketplace is right here. And here is the folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, head over to my projects plugins folder going to delete the template or the whole plugin itself and paste in the new one. Now, once we're in here, this is the kind of setup that you will see. Now I'm going to go ahead and launch the project and give you an example of what happens if you don't do anything. So let's go ahead and launch really quick. Oh, so this will be your warning. So you're going to hit no. You're going to open up your U project in Notepad. And if you scroll to where you find the plugin Ultimate FPS template, the plugin has been renamed to Ultimate FPS Framework to better support the name and what it's actually doing. So you're going to want to save that. And now you can actually launch it. Okay, and as I'm launching, here you can see the first thing that pops up is just a bunch of blueprint warnings or blueprint errors because they claim they don't exist anymore. So you're just going to keep hitting cancel. Well, in my case, I'm going to keep hitting cancel until it actually launches. And then once I'm there, you will see I am met with this giant list here of failed to load outer. So basically it's treating the classes as if they do not have a, uh, a parent. That's kind of the general way to look at it. So as you can see, that's, it's basically every single class and it has a problem. So for example, if I were to go to the M4 and try to launch that, you can see a blueprint could not be loaded because it derives from an invalid class. Make sure it has a, or make sure the parent, check to make sure it has a parent class for this blueprint or that the parent class hasn't been removed. So. Basically, that's what all these blueprints are going to be met with. So the way we resolve that is with redirectors. So I've already created a pretty <laughs> extensive one. So here, it'll be under the pin messages of the support channel. You can go ahead and just download it. So it'll be default ultimate FPS framework .any. Go ahead and download. I'm just going to save mine to my desktop. There's my uh, downloads folder. So we're going to grab this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it, go to plugins, ultimate FPS template, and here we're going to create a config folder. So config and paste. As you can see, the content wise, it's basically redirecting a bunch of classes over to their new ones. So for example, here we have the uh, FPS template part base. So anything derived from that class, it's now going to be redirected from the ultimate FPS template module to the ultimate FPS framework module with the class name SKG part. So it's like that for everything for class redirects, enums, structs, and some functions. So now that that is in there, let's go ahead and relaunch. Okay, so I just got to the editor. I didn't have to even click through cancel or anything like that, just due to some of the uh, type or struct redirects. And we didn't have another pop-up claiming a bunch of warnings. So if I load up the M4 here, you can see it actually loads up. It's got the parent class already set. Everything's basically good to go. So there's just things that you would have to go through and fix normally. But once you're at this stage, what I recommend you do is you right click and resave all. So remember, with the redirectors, this kind of resolved all the blueprint issues. But you would have to keep them there. So the reason for resave all is it's going to fix up those redirectors. So I'm going to right click, resave all, 
and I will see you once this is done. Alrighty, so now that is finished, it took roughly, I'd say a minute to a minute and 10 seconds. We're gonna go ahead and close down the project, and I'm going to remove, or, yeah, I can go ahead and replace it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the redirectors out of there. So now we have no more redirectors, but we should still be able to launch with the same result. So let's go ahead and load it up. All right, so as you can see, it loaded everything just fine. And we are now good to go. We still have our, you know, M4 and everything's already still set up. We don't have the parts because it uses a uh, different system for the possible attachments, which that'll be covered in a future video. But we are basically good to go. Now it's just up to actually fixing up the blueprints themselves. So for example, since a lot of stuff has been moved to interfaces, we are going to want to resolve that. So for reference, we're going to go ahead and load up the example character here, and I'm going to give you a walkthrough with just a couple of them. So for starters, here we have the zoom and high and low port. So when I say zoom, I mean zooming in and out with your optic. So we already know, for example, here it says invalid message node. You can kind of get a rough idea of, okay, this is using an interface function because it now has uh, the little envelope there. So we still have our character component and all that stuff. That's all the same. But as you can see here, we're getting the aiming actor. Now get aiming actor and get firearm has been replaced with get held actor. So if I drag off of the character component, I can search for get held actor and that comes up so we can plug that into is valid. And as you can see, we have, oh wait there, that's from the character component. We are gonna wanna check over here. And as you can see, we have an indication of zoom, an indication of zoom. So we know we can search for zoom and you'll see we have zoom optic under the new site interface. So we plug that in, delete the node, and plug it in to true, and check for enable zoom. Then we can remove get aiming actor. Then it's gonna be the exact same thing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my get held actor, plug it in, and zoom optic, but with false, and plug it into the get held actor. So that'll take care of that. And it's going to be the same thing for all the get aiming actors and all the firearms. So the firearm stuff is down here. So we have get firearm. Again, same exact thing. And we now have more poses. So you can add those and link them up however you wish. So let me find another example that we're going to replace together. All right. So we're just going to do this left mouse button, which is basically the uh, fire logic. So this is already targeted to the SKG firearm interface. Thankfully, it automatically picked that up. I hope it stays that way but we're using get firearm. So we're gonna replace that again. So we're gonna run a get held actor, go to the is valid nodes here, and then this one runs to the fire. So as you can see, it doesn't link up, so we can just search for fire. And we have one underneath the firearm interface. So we're gonna grab that, plug it in, and plug that into, let's see, that was running into None and short stock. And we also have these extra poses, so I'm going to plug it into there as well. So we're going to run it into none, short stock, and I want to shoot from the opposite shoulder, as well as both the blind fires. So we can plug that in like so. And then this is plugged into stop fire. So we're going to drag this. We're going to search for stop fire, also an interface function, and that's plugged out of this is valid pin right here. Then we can remove, get firearm. And that is another issue fixed. So I'm gonna head over to the firearm itself and fix one there. And that should give you basically the rough idea on how things are being uh, handled. So pretty much everything is done through an interface now. That is for your sights, attachments, firearms, all that stuff. Okay, so over here in the import base class, uh, as you can see, it actually turned one of them into an interface function call already, which that's actually quite handy. So we're gonna plug that in so we can see that uh, this whole section here, let's actually fix this guy up really quick. So get projectile socket transform from center, get projectile socket transform from center, plug in the minutes of angle in, and grab the max distance to test, make sure that's the same, aiming override, and we are good. Just making it match. Okay, let's go ahead and drag this forward a bit, clear up some room, and I'm just going to plug in the execution pin after the handle muzzle heat. We're gonna plug it in like so, and then plug it in after. So 
I don't feel like kind of removing stuff around, so this can be the cleaner, I guess, kind of way to put it. But that will handle and fix that up. So we can go ahead and save there. We have another use of get firearm stats. So somewhere in here, let me plug that into the activate projectile. So let's slide that on over and link the get firearm stats up there. Get muzzle socket transform, same kind of thing. We can plug that in right here. Slide you over, plug it in. And again, thankfully it picks up the majority of the interface functions. So here we have a call to get part from get part component. So basically we are dragging off and we want to find, we no longer have the get part component. So instead we have the, basically a set of attachment components and well, attachments, no longer parts. Remember it's been moved to a generic attachment system if you've been following along at all. So the system's overall a little bit different. So here we have basically a get part component, check if it's valid, get the part, and then we cast it to the barrel to see if it is the barrel. So I did set up a caching system by default inside the farm itself. So the way we can do that is we can search for get cached components. And here we can go ahead and break it, or I guess in this case split it. And you can see we have, we can get the barrel, the handguard, stock, so on and so on. And here we get all the parts. We have the sights, lasers, magnifiers, and things with render targets. So we know right here, we're getting the barrel, but this returns an attachment component. So let's check if it's valid first. And then we can actually do get attachment. So that's going to replace get part. So we have get attachment, cast it to the barrel, and then that's good to go. So we can go ahead and delete those. And now we are good to go. Now we just have one more gets muzzle socket transform. Just for the fire effect, we can plug that into the is valid and plug that out. Then we just simply compile and our firearm is now good to go. We can actually, you know, make use of it. So that's going to wrap up the gist of it. That's probably going to be a solid 90 something percent of what you're doing. Uh, this one here, the target, I'm not exactly sure why it didn't add the component, but well, the whole component, because it has the mesh and everything. So I'm just not entirely sure what the issue was, but maybe it might work on your end. I'm not sure if it's because I loaded my project beforehand or what, but the redirector is in there, so it should pick it up. But if not, and you still want to use it, all it is is the hole component. So SKG hole, you can drag it off and search for did impact hit hole. And then we have another call, which is add hole. So we can plug these up, pass in the hit result, pass the return value into a branch, and then the false into add hole, which also takes in the hit result. And we are good to go. We can delete the old nodes and simply replace them. And now we have a good to go target again. So again, it's pretty straightforward stuff. It shouldn't be like, it's very easy stuff to fix and replace. It's just gonna be a little tedious. But anyways, I know this was a very boring video, but this will basically, if you're confused on what to do to help merge this into your project, this should be the general guide of what to do. And again, I highly recommend you look into core redirectors if you are confused by any means, which of course I just removed them, but feel free to add any that you feel like you actually, like any that you need extra wise, such as maybe I didn't add a class that I'm not using here to it that I might've forgotten. It's very easy just to copy and paste. So for example, I have another class that I didn't use. I didn't just copy one of these, paste it. I'll just give the name of the class. So like FPS template, uh, my random class and let's say the new class name is something like skg my random class you save it you relaunch your project you're good to go it's again it's pretty straightforward pretty simple to use i have basically the format for almost the majority of the types in there that you're going to use anyways but yeah that's gonna wrap it up hopefully it's not too bad to merge your project and as always if you're struggling or anything like that you have support. So I will see you in the next video, which should hopefully be the beginning of the new tutorial series. So that'll be kind of fun. I'll see you then.